Frankie, you've brought a stripper on here. I'll tell you why I brought a stripper on here. Because right. you want to join Magic Men. Magic Men's been around for around the same time that I started there. It felt like it was my baby as well, because I was like, I've seen this grow from the club that we were at, doing 50, 60 girls, to now doing 500, 600, 1,000 women. So I just wanted to obviously be a part of it. Then. You could actually go somewhere, be anyone, do anything. But you don't realise that when you're just living in the bubble that you're in. And even if something does go wrong, I always believe that happens for a reason. So it'll but keep me on a good path. You were my first and only friend so far to ever bring out their own vibrator. <laughs> you can't do male entertainment forever. So real estate's just been my little project that I've just been trying to learn. Life's always going to try to beat you down. Even some of the closest people to you are going to tell you that that's not going to happen. You just got a ton of vision. Quick, Quick one before we jump into this podcast. Do me a solid favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and drop a comment below this video. If you're looking to remove images, videos, search results, or fake accounts online, go to contentremoval.com. But don't take my word for it. Here's on Mosey. Frank, you're a fucking legend. I just saw this. Layla also thinks you're a legend, which in my mind means you're <laughs> which also which means you're a double legend in my mind. If you get my wife to think you're a legend, then you're you're extra cool in my mind. Dude, thank you so much, genuinely. That was um such a pain. Welcome back to the Frankie Lee podcast. Don't you start laughing, mate. Don't you start like, let, let, let me do the intro. Let me do the intro. <laughs> you lot are going to love this podcast. You know why? Because we've got the troop back together. You have got today. You've not got one. You've not got one. You've got the two magic Englishmen. <laughs> Mr. Will Parfit, welcome to the sofa, my man. Welcome, Cheers, well, welcome to the official podcast. Yeah, do you know what? This is the first one back in the studio. For for must be quite a number of months because obviously five month tour, and they'll just come back just on Melbourne. Yeah, obviously we met a meet up in Melbourne, but you yeah. ghosted me <laughs> like you ghost half your girlfriends. Wait, and, uh, you disappeared in the DMs there for a Oh, minute. mate, I bet. <laughs> do you know what? After seeing your DMs, no wonder I disappeared. <laughs> but <laughs> mate, what a journey, mate! Ten years in Australia. Yeah, that's and it. you've 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 blown up. Obviously, massive on TikTok, massive on Instagram. Obviously, look, in with this kind of podcast, I explore, I'm willing to explore all types of business models. Obviously, you've gone for the live sh- show model with the stripping and stuff like that. Yeah. And you've, you, you've smashed it. But I, I want people to really understand your true journey, mate, because I don't think a lot of people do. They see all the, the virality around what you're doing and all that they stuff see now. The high life. And they see the high life and they see all the shows and the sold out shows, 300, 400 women at a time and all this stuff, which is great. But... You know, give me a bit of an insight into your childhood growing up in England and how you even got to the point of like coming to Australia and what was going on then. Um, well, I grew up in South London, Croydon, which I don't know if you've yeah. been there. You've probably been there Bro, at some I've point. Been there, I've been there a few times. And, uh, I wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> highest knife crime in England. That's the record they hold there. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, it's not the best area. Um, but my family has moved to the country now. They're in Norfolk, so... Um, when I went back place. there, yeah, they're back to the back, more country now. So my parents are like retired out there, which is good. Um, but yeah, then the idea to come to Australia was, it was such a random decision, to be honest. It was my best mate had just broken up with his girlfriend and, you know, consoling him as you do. I was like, where's the furthest we can go <laughs> to get away from your ex-missus? And Australia it was. And we'd had a couple of our boys say to us, you boys need to go and check out Australia. It's awesome out there. They'd been like out here just for a holiday and stuff. So we were like, fuck it. We'll just book a one-month holiday, see if we get the visas. Well, we was actually toss- tossing up between Australia and America and applied for visas for both. And Australia came back almost instantly. Like the, the Yeah, yeah. I, I applied, like, obviously, I came out here eight years ago. Mm. And when you used to apply for an Australian visa... Um, see, Australians don't know how lucky they are to live in. Yeah, I know that's so, the thing. They actually you pay, don't. You, you pay, you paid like a two hundred, two hundred pound, and it came back as I was granted a visa in twenty four hours, bro. Yeah, it's literally that fast. Yeah, I know because someone had said that to us that I don't know how true this is, and don't <laughs> I don't know if you could even be speaking about this, but apparently, if you do it on a Sunday night, there's no one in the office, so it's like an automated acceptance thing <laughs> of the visa, <laughs> especially if it's just like the working holiday, which like everyone gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we tried it on a Sunday night and I actually did it. Ours came back straight away. Within like an hour, we got the visa accepted. 
And so then I was like, and that was obviously before the American one came back because that would have taken a week or two. So, isn't it amazing though how um, a lot of English guys end up here here after a bad relationship breakup? Because you telling that story about your mate breaking up, I, I, I was I was that mate. Do you know oh, what I mean? Really? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I broke up with uh, well, Mrs. in two thousand and thirteen. And I was sat there crying in my apartment. Oh, like, <laughs> and I was like... We've all been there. And, 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 been I, there. I, I rang me mum. I rang me mum after I'd stopped crying. <laughs> in between the I got, got to look like a man. I was like, uh, I'm going to Australia. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I've, I've, I've rang Lewis. He's renting out my apartment. Da, 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 da. I got, and that's it, mate. And 2014, whoosh, straight out of here. Straight out of here. Straight out of here. It's because the furthest we can get away. Unless yeah. you go to New Zealand or something. But, but what, what were you doing as a job back in the UK? Uh, I was working at Morrison's, mate. So <laughs> Aussies wouldn't know what Morrison's is, but it's it's a bit like Woolworths and like Coles. Coles. Woolworths like and Coles. Coles. I've got a lot of a lot of uh, English and American listeners as well. So yeah, because I was I'd finished school obviously, and then did college for a bit. But I was unsure what I was even going to do, to be honest. And then I was like, I'll just take a year or two, just work, get some money together, and then decide whether I go to uni or because I I did want to go travelling, but. I hadn't decided where or what I was going to do. So I just started working there. I was actually doing night shifts, so it was brutal. So it was just like stacking shelves, basically, on the night shift and then saved up the money. And then obviously that happened with my mate and his ex. So then we were just like, fuck it, let's go. Yeah. Now I've got nothing holding me here. He's obviously not with his isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it amazing how many of us got stuck in the UK working those eight to ten pounds an hour jobs back then? Yeah, 100%. And, and, and we mean. thought... And we thought we were smashing life back then. Yeah, I know. And That's it, mate. It's actually crazy it, when you look back. And I was like, I was like, how did I even live off that money in the first place? I, I, I go, I go back to the UK a lot, and obviously you go back every now and again. And just to see some of the struggle there in in the even now, like especially some, now, it's yeah. even worse now at the minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I thought it was. I thought this is a hard life when I went back. Yeah. I thought this is really hard. I, I, mean, d- I don't know how people. I went do it. back just after COVID and everything happened for Christmas. It was the first time I'd been back for a winter, like so, I went back Christmas time, and I was like, "How did I live? <laughs> how did I live here going through these winters every year?" Because it's actually like I didn't realize how. Oh I mean, my apartment uh, uh, in England is a two bed apartment, mm. and it's probably. Only a little bit bigger than my one bed here. I didn't realize how small, w- w- like our accommodation is compared to. You don't realize when you're living in the bubble, though, do you? That's the crazy thing as well. Like when I went back, there were still so many of my old mates. They hadn't moved, hadn't done anything. They're still doing the same thing, working the same jobs, going to the same pub, same club every that, week. That that that's that's um that's something good to talk into actually because I think. Whether you whether whether you're Australian, English, American, or wherever you're listening to this in the world, it's like mm. you've got to be willing to break the patterns of what you're doing in order to want more for yourself. And some and sometimes that means you're gonna have to shed friends. It's gonna you're gonna have to shed relationships. Hundred percent. You have to. You can't. You can't repeat what you're what you're currently doing and expect a different outcome yeah, in life. Yeah, so true. So and, true. And I think that's something that me and you have. Really had to learn because I, I came out here as a carpenter and joiner. Yeah, that's how I got. Uh, I That's came what out. my mate was doing. That's what my mate. Yeah, was man, doing. I got I got the working holiday visa for a year, mm. and then and then I, and then obviously after a week, you think to yourself, "We're in the, the Australians are in a lucky sperm club, aren't they?" Yeah, like, I know. You, you can't. You t- you twenty three million of you, <laughs> you lucky bastards. I know, yeah, like how lucky are they? Within like a month of being out here, I feel like I'd already decided. I don't know. It was like subconsciously in there. I already knew I was going to try and stay here. Even though I was still like, oh, maybe I'll go back after like a, maybe I'll still just come here for a holiday. But I feel like subconsciously I knew I was going to try and stay here. Mate, I wanted it, to stay here. Mate, it's, it's, it's honestly like an unbelievable, unbelievable environment to yeah. even, to even think that you could be born into this. Like, and there's people out there born into it. I just, every day I walk around, <laughs> every day I walk around. I mean, even if you, ha- even if you're unlucky enough like you to live in Melbourne, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's still, it's still not too bad, is it? It's like, 
like a it's like a it's like a good version right. of London yeah, where there's no knife crime. Yeah, literally. You know, like, yeah. Like, 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 that's what it is. That's what people say about Melbourne, though. They're like, "Oh, why do you live?" Especially Aussies. I know it's different for you, but like Aussies say that to me as well. They're like, "Why would you pick Melbourne?" I'm like, "Have you lived in England? Like Melbourne winter's not even. Yeah, it's yeah. not even a patch on like an English winter. Like I've never once in Australia worn gloves because it's yeah. cold." I was cold yesterday in Melbourne. <laughs> you were we, we were both in, in Melbourne scarf. yesterday. No, I wasn't wearing gloves in a scarf. <laughs> That's but, what I mean. That's I English to, cold. But, 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 yeah. but it does get cold, yeah. I, but plus, I, you probably got used to the Gold Coast weather as well. So I remember before, before, just to put it in context for all of you Australians listening, it's like I was working on a church roof because I did English Heritage Carpentry and Joinery. Mm. I was working on a church roof in minus 15 in two, on December 2013. It was the coldest winter on record for years and years and years. I was sheeting up a church roof out in the middle of Norfolk, right, probably near where your family live, yeah. near Kings Lynn. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I, was, I, was, I, was, I was sheeting up this church roof. It was, it, it was a wind chill factor of minus 13, minus 15. My hands were like like this, like shaking. Yeah, like, it's like, actually to your bones. Yeah, to your bone and, cold. yeah and there isn't a winter I've known where we don't drop to at least minus four, minus five. And that is, that is savage on you. Yeah. Like, you kind of, you kind of, I just want all of you Australians to listen to this to understand how fucking lucky you are. It's cold. Because it's I cold. get I get a lot yeah. of them, I let, get a lot of them go to me, hey Frankie, I'm, I'm going to London. I'm like, you have no idea. They're so happy about it, aren't they? That's <laughs> what like, they say to me. They're I'm like, like, you have no idea. I know, they're like, you, oh, I'm so jealous you, you, you lived in London. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. Do go what? there and live there for a year, and then you'll be running back here. You'll be running back. Yeah, because the, the, you know that lack of vitamin D for a start is going to kill you off. Like that, living in a shoebox, and then yeah, it's just it's just there's no. I, I like going back to London for like three months to podcast and travel and yeah. all this kind of stuff and do in the summer it's great mate yeah. summer london if you land in london in the summer yeah you get this false sense of security yeah and it and it just it's just like that's what all the aussies have when they travel because they go to london in the summer and then they they stay there for a couple of weeks then they leave so then they think it's they think like that all the time they're like oh it's i want to go, I wanna go there, to london yeah Frankie, I'm, I'm going to move to London. I'm going to get a job in the city. Yeah. I'm like, what? You're going to get a job in the city paying 25, 35 grand a year and you're going to live in a box out, out, out sticks of London and pay £1,900 a week for it. Yeah, so you it's, can't live in the it's, city. Yeah, it's no terrible, way. mate. It's terrible. But, you know, if, if you, if you want to, if you want an experience, definitely go there, have a little look. But I think, I think it's a, I think it's a hard life in England. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Aussies have got it good. But after you've been out here for a while, what what was your first kind of job and stuff over here? Mate, I was just doing um, odd jobs, to be honest. I was, well, the f- one of the first ones was a sales job. Um, so we were in Brisbane, actually. Brisbane was where I flew into. Same here, bro. Was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I so it. flew into <laughs> I Yeah, but it. when I got to Brisbane, I was like... <laughs> Weather's so good here because yeah. it's like you're still. It feels like paradise compared to England. So I was like, this is decent. And then, then I was like, oh, like we obviously just had a month on the piss, just like enjoying life because we was out here. We were like we made it to Australia, and then we were like, right, if we want to stay here, need to get a job now. So then got a job. Yeah, this sales job, which was door to door, but um, it was actually good. It was better than like what you'd think when like you say door to door because just because of like the group that was there. Met some good guys there, and everyone's just doing the same thing, like just trying to get the hustle, hustle on and yeah, try and yeah, stay yeah. in Australia. Because so we all motivate yeah. each other. Because so. it doesn't matter what people say, it is really hard to hustle and stay here. And there were times like Mate, no, it's hard. There's so many of people, like people we met, who come and go, and they wanted to stay. They just couldn't stay. They ever ran out of money. They couldn't get the visas, or yeah, they just they had no other choice that to go home. But they do make they do make it hard. It's very strict. To, yeah, to, very, to, hard. very hard to stay it's here. Not many options, and it's, it's even getting harder now. It's even harder now. I know, so. but I, th- I still think that even when we did it, and <clears throat> what what I know we're going to talk into, and, and you have to go through to to even be able to have the opportunities we've got. Yeah, you know, there's no there's no there's no luck in there's no luck in where we both are now. Compared, nah, no like, way. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Because I've been broke. I, I, I don't know how many times have you have you ever been broke here? I've been broke here twice, bro. Yeah, hundred percent. It's f- fucking savage when you're yeah. broke when you got no family. Yeah, I know it's the worst. Yeah. I mean, how did you? It makes you just want to fly home. What was your situation when you went broke? Um, when I was. 
trying to get the I was trying to do farm work because you have to do farm work to stay here yeah. or some sort of regional work to, to stay here and we'd we'd left a job and then uh, what happened we was we were we, we went to this farm and then we got we'd like spent almost our last amount of money to get there and then they said to us oh there's it's like there's such a hold up because we've got so many backpackers here it's going to be like three months you might get a odd day here and there whereas on the phone they just want they just want to get you there kind of thing because yeah. they want you to pay for the hostel so it's a bit dodgy like that farm work game because they they just want to get you there to pay for the hostel, but then when you're there, they'll only give you like one or two days. So that's not good enough to like and sign then, off your and, farm work. And then what I've heard is <clears> that they give you they only give you a couple of days because then they know you can't afford not to leave. Yeah, you exactly. Because yeah. you haven't got enough money. And then you you, know I mean? you stay there for ages because you have to do three months. It's like twenty eight days all in one, or three or what? No, three months. Wherever it is, you have to do like three months in total. Back then, you had to do three months to get your farm work. So if you're only doing two days a week, you're going to be there for ages, just trying to complete those three months worth of farm work. So yeah, they sort of trap you in. And then me and my mate made a decision. We either bounce with our last amount of money on this bus back to Brisbane, or we and we try and get a job there, or we... I don't even know what we was going to do. Or we just try and stay there and risk it and try and get a couple of days farm work and just scrape through. So in the end, we spent the last of our money getting back to Brisbane and then luckily we got a job in Brisbane but yeah that's like when I look back now I always like me and my best mate always say like they were the best times because the journey and we look back and we laugh about it now yeah, yeah. but at the time you're stressed off your nut because you're like you don't want to leave the country you're loving yeah. it here but you also like you're like we, we we can't eat if we ain't got no food. Where are we going to stay? I'm not going to like sleep on the street when I could just fly back to England. You know I, d- I, mean? I don't know how you felt, <clears throat> but what what when I came out here, right? Mm. I saw all this abundance, like all these well, very wealthy young Australian kids driving like um, cars so, that we couldn't even get yeah, insured on in England. Car, cars that we couldn't even like, you know, you know. I left I left England at, and. The, t- the top car I'd got by then was like a BMW convertible, bro. Oh, mate, right? I'd afford Fiesta, mate. <laughs> right, so, <laughs> you so, so I, I was I was living, I thought I'd made it, right? Yeah. I had a BMW and a, and a nice two-bed apartment and all that stuff. I, I thought I'd made it, mate. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? I thought I was, I was ready to settle down, bro. Like, yeah. I was ready I was ready to get wifed up. That was it. I was retired, mate. Mm. I had the, thir- you know, 25 grand a year job. Yeah. I thought life was set. When I came here and I started to see that, you know, there was people people that were 19 driving around the g-wagon bro and yeah. i'm like it's crazy in your heart yeah. when you come here as an immigrant and you're earning 25 dollars an hour mm. and that's good money for you compared to where you've been yeah, yeah right because yeah. people people have got to understand that but then you're like wow there's an there's 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 levels to this and i feel like a poor person yeah, like, do you, did you feel that? Yeah, the same. Did you yeah. feel, did you feel some kind of? Because I felt some kind of in that moment. I was like, I felt a little bit inadequate. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I was like, wow, I actually feel a bit vulnerable here, mate. Yeah, it's crazy. The like as well, look, what you said about the money as well. Whereas we got a job and it was paying twenty an hour, and we were like, this is amazing because like compared to what we were on in England, it just seemed so much more. But then the Aussies would look at that. As like that's a bottom end job. Yeah, yeah. And then we were like, the guys in construction here are making fifty an hour. We were like, that's insane. Yeah. So the first, the first when when I when I the first so the first time I was broke, I came here. Imagine this. I'd 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 I'd, I'd came over here with with six thousand dollars and a bag of clothes. Mm-hmm. So I get here right. I spend two thousand on a car, thousand or something on the accommodation. And I, and then I bought some tools, which were, which were quite expensive, like two two and a half thousand. So I had five hundred notes left. Yeah. And then I got a job with this being, I, I couldn't get a job as a carpenter at the time because I was signed up for these labour hire agencies. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? I'll because because we're English, we want to work, we want to earn some cash, don't we? So yeah. I thought I'll go. I, I I didn't have any like pride or anything in this. I just went to labour for a, for a tiler. Yeah. And, it, and his name was Tyler the Tyler, and if he still exists. I'm coming for you one day, bro. I'm coming for you. I'm seriously coming for you. Right? Tyler the Tyler. Tyler the Tyler. Let me tell you what he did, right? 
I worked for this guy for three weeks, bro, and he promised me $21 an hour or something like that. Mm. He didn't pay me anything, mate. So I'd been spending my 500 bearing in mind, fuel was costing, because I had to go from, from the Gold Coast, and I was living in Mermaid at the time, had to travel all the way up to um, near Logan, yeah. right, to, for this for this tiling job. I went to there every day for three weeks. The guy never paid me. Right? So I'd worked 40 hours a week for three weeks at $21 an hour, so that's it, the thing as well. You get absolutely rorted as a when, when you when you first come here, you get robbed. Yeah, you literally, get robbed yeah. if you're not careful. And and yeah, that that we was, did so many of those time. like odd days here and there, like labouring. We never got paid for them. But you like work your bollocks out for those twelve hours. Yeah, because you're only like there for a day here and there. They would just you just never they just never pay you. And it, 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 <laughs> you got no leg to stand on because you're not like uh, part of a union or nothing like that. You got you, you, backpack. Yeah, I, do you know the amount of the amount of money in those early days that I got t- took off me. Yeah, that I lost through just like th- trusting, trusting, the, yeah, trusting 100%. the process. But I wouldn't change any of it because it's led led us to this point. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, exactly and it's right. beautiful, and, it, and it's beautiful. That's why I said, like me and my mate, look back and laugh now at the stuff. That we did go through, but at the time, it's not funny. It's stressful, it made, but uh, it made, it but now, made me emotional yeah. at the time because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, "Fuck this geezer!" Like I've worked all day for that two hundred dollars, yeah, and now I don't even have it. Mm. But I've still, you know, and you've, yeah, mate, it, it was mental, mate. Yeah, it was, it's men- crazy, it, it was yeah. mental, mental, the kind of stuff. Mm. So, how did you then get from f- transfer from all that kind of journey into obviously? You get the second year, or you get your second year for doing your farm work yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Now you're here. How did you get into stripping and all that? How did that come about? Um, so, well, I think I was on my second year visa, and it was coming to the end. And we had about six months left. It was coming up to like our last six months. And then I was like, I said to my best mate, I was like, let's get because we'd been in hostels and travelling all that time in and out of like hostels so you're just staying in bunk beds sharing with eight people I said the last six months let's just get an apartment and just live it for the last six months because if it's our last six months here is what it is but at least we can say we lived it for the last six months so we got an apartment on Collins Street in Melbourne so it's like a a decent it's right in the middle of the city and we got that and then um, then we was like I was dressed up going on a night out and then I bumped into it was like one of those one of those nights where you don't drink but <laughs> one of those drunken <laughs> nights where you lose your mate so I'd lost my mate I was just out on my own just carried on drinking with randoms and then I bumped into this guy and he was like Channing Tatum and I was like what and he was like you're Channing Tatum's little brother aren't you and then he was like and I was like, yeah, just going along. He was like, come and meet my mate. So he took me over to his mates. He's like, this is Channing Tatum's little cousin. He's from England and all this. And I was like, got him on Facebook as you do back then. Like, it's just Facebook was like pretty much the only social media back then, weren't it? But um, so I got him on Facebook. And um, then like a couple of days later, he put a Facebook status up saying we need topless waiters. And... Um, I just replied to him because I'd been training then as well because like, I'd got into the gym a bit here as well. I, I used to like do the gym in England, but I got back into it because we were like more settled then. Like we was in an apartment. We could like yeah, you get more of a routine yeah, yeah, rather yeah. than just backpacking. So then I messaged him. I was like, mate, I'd give it a go. I've never done anything like that before. And uh, like I said, I'm just going to live it for the last six months that I'm here. And uh, he, he was like, yeah, I'll put you in touch with... And then I get a phone call from the guy at the time who owned Magic Men. And yeah, he just rings me up and he's like, yeah, come down for a trial. Mate, and I don't know what it was. And I say this to people now, but and it like, sounds like I'm bullshitting because it's easy to say once you're in a good position. But I swear I had the best feeling about about Magic Men. I don't know why because it was just a topless waiter in job. But maybe it's because I'd gone through so many shit jobs in Australia. But inside me, it was like I knew something big was going to come from it. I was like, I have to go to this trial. Like, I don't know. Do you know when there's there's, there's times in your life you get that feeling? Yeah. And I, I I think I've had it. I think I've had it uh, twice. And one, once when I started the pursuit of of being a professional boxing trainer. Yeah. I I knew when I started that very moment I started on that pursuit. I knew I'd work at world title level. Yeah. The second time I knew it, and I felt it that the way you've just described is the day I put the first piece of audio down for this podcast. Yeah. I thought, wow, I've just found. The, what I'm meant to be doing. I've so just like you found, found your it. calling or something. Yeah. yeah. So d- d- 
just so that you And would- the weirdest thing as well, this is what ties into that, is when I was working in that, when I was stacking shelves back in England, there was this guy, and I never really got on with him that much. Like, we, like you know, just one of them people, you just yeah, keep yeah, at yeah. each other's way. But when I left, he come up to me and he was like, mate, it was, it was weird, but he just come up to me and he gave me like a card. He was like, oh, mate, good luck. But he goes, find your calling out there. But I like, you know, like it gave me goosebumps when he said it. It was weird because we didn't even like get on that well yeah. or speak that much. But he just said it to me before I came out here and I was like, man, that's so weird. And then when I was like, when I got the trial at Magic Man, mate, I thought about that and I was like, that's, it felt like I was like, it was my calling. I don't know why it sounds stupid. to think nah, like, mate. Because like at the end of the day, you, we're both, we're both in a, in a, in, a, in separate arenas. We're both performers. Yeah. Like I perform with my voice and try and get the best out of people with my voice and communication. And yeah. You try and get the best out of people by making them laugh, by making them cry, by making them emotional, by making them have the best night of their life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's just that's just how it how it is. It's like like a performance yeah. job. But I suppose when you, I know from from my experience when you when you when you feel. Your your gut never lies. Yeah, to you, mate, it's right? actually true. And how many times have you 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 get that feeling as well? Whether it's a relationship or a person, you get that gut feeling about them. But sometimes you ignore it. Sometimes you don't go with it, or sometimes you ignore it, and then then it goes pear shaped or it, it goes wrong. And you're like, I knew that. I knew it at the time. Yeah, 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 I yeah, didn't yeah. listen to myself, and then it backfires on you. But like, yeah, that's how I felt with that trial. And I was like, I have to go to this because I don't know why, but I've got such a good feeling about it and I have to go to it and nail it. Do you, do you ever feel that, uh, cause I really, I really believe this. I believe everyone that comes into your life and, and every conversation is for a reason. Yeah. Like I just kind of, I just kind of feel like there's there's things that are sent to test you because you they're trying to teach you to answer a shadow within yourself that you need to get over yeah. and move through. That's all part of the journey. And also, and I just I believe that's just a good way to go through your life as well because if you always believe that even if because then you stay on that positive mindset as well is how I see that because if something does go wrong and then you believe it's a it's gone wrong for a reason like you can't really ever be brought that far down do you know what I mean because you even if something goes wrong in your life you're like it's happened for a reason then you stay on that positive vibe no matter what happens if something goes drastically wrong you're like that's happened because this is gonna something's gonna come good when I look back now as well I I'm so proud of like the way that we came through yeah because it was hard Mm. it makes it when you look back you're like wow that's that I feel such an achievement and sometimes when I speak to young Australians that have had a privileged lifestyle like a really privileged lifestyle yeah and they want to go out traveling to like the Londons and stuff sometimes I think that the reason they feel some lack in themselves in from what I can tell when they mm. speak to me and they feel like something's missing the reason they feel something's missing is because they've had everything they've had it good yeah. they've had it everything not saying not saying that's their fault that was just their cards that they were dealt but when yeah. you're dealt a little bit of a uh, I, I've seen some some Indian guys come over here and make good good moves, and I've seen when I see the immigration, I, the immigrant mentality. When I see yeah. that, when I see that working, I know I know a Brazilian guy that's doing really well in building over here. It's like when I see that, it's, it just it just I don't know. It just they're the most fulfilled people I know. Yeah, because they've because they've not come from like a generational wealth point of view. They've yeah, come exactly. From, they've 100%. come they've come from a bag of clothes. They've point got of that view. fire in their belly as well because they're like I'm it's different. I'm it's different. That's here, yeah. that's why it probably is good that. Um, you know, if you if you've been here all your life, if you've, especially if you've been in Australia all your life, and you're Australian listening to this, it probably is good that you go and travel and try somewhere else, yeah. because you'll learn. What, you know what, what me and Will have to, have had to learn, and there's mm. a lot there's a lot of juice in that. There's a lot of, there's yeah. a lot of lessons. There's a lot of hardships, but there's a lot of. But when you when you can sit on this sofa right now and just talk about this and and be peaceful knowing that you've been broke and, yeah. and be peaceful knowing that you couldn't feed yourself that day. And yeah. it's like weird stuff. It's, it sounds weird, but I, I just, I just believe it. It's like, it's all, it's like all led to this point. It's very right, powerful. 100%, so true. So powerful. But yeah. so you start doing this naked Butler thing or, or like top, topless, topless waiting. Yeah. Topless waiting. How long, how long, how long was it before that you started to like use that to grow a social media following and all that kind of stuff? Um, so when I started, it was actually, it did seem like a, like a 
strip club like it was like a little grimy club in south melbourne and it only fitted like some shows they were only doing like 50 50 60 girls maybe would come in there but still i was like this is actually this is crazy and you're just gonna get paid to go in this club and party with girls so i was like mate 100 percent, i'll do this why not like especially you were how old at this point i was 23 23 yeah. 24 no 24 yeah 24 i think yeah, 24, 25. And I was like, mate, 100%, I'm going out partying anyway. So Might if well I get can paid. get paid for it, yeah, then 100% I'm going to do this. And then um, did the trial, smashed it, got that. And then they wanted me to do a photo shoot and I got on the website. And that was when the like first sort of, like the Channing comparisons was coming in then when yeah, they put yeah, me on yeah. the website. Because they... Um, the girl who was running the bookings rung me up and she goes, have you ever thought about having a, like a, a stripper name? And I was like, nah, not really. And then she was like, every girl keeps saying they want the one that looks like Channing on the website. And then she was like, do you want to change your name to Channing? And I was like, oh, that's a bit cringy. But I was like, it's going to help with bookings. So at one point there, they did actually change my name to Channing as my, <laughs> as my like waiter in name. Um, which obviously helped with bookings and it started going crazy then. With, but I was just doing topless waitering. But I was like happy with that because it was just like so extra how much were you, you earning? Um, the waitering was like 100 bucks an hour. But I was like, I was smashing like the whole Saturday I ended up doing. I started doing like 12 o'clock, started doing them. And I, was, I wasn't finished until like two, two, one, two in the morning. So yeah, I was making like five, 600 bucks. But that's what made me like progress into doing the shows because... You see the like the guys coming in, they're only there for 20 minutes, whereas when you're waiting, you have to be there for two hours. So I was like, I'd rather just come in and do the show, get my money and like do that. rather yeah. than. And the thing is, when I first started, I was like, I'd never do the shows. I was like, no way could I do that. I can go up on stage in front of those girls, no way. The waiting room was easier for me because I can stand there talking to girls all day if I have to. So that was easy for me. You just had to flirt with girls. But the shows, I was like, nah, no way I could do that. But once you get in there with the boys and then you got like the environment with the guys and you're just having banter with those boys, um, I was like, I could do that. Like that guy's not like a pro dancer, but he just does it. It's more like they learn a routine and then they just yeah, get good at that. It is just... actually more just performing than dancing. Like because you, it's, you, it's how you like connect with the crowd and entertain the crowd. You don't have to be like a Chris Brown up there or Michael Jackson busting out all these dance moves. No way. If anything, the crowd goes silent when the guys are dancing because obviously you're watching then. Whereas the other guys who were like getting eye contact with the crowd, getting the girls standing up, like that's when the crowd's going crazy. So it's more performing. And that's when I was like, okay, I could do that. I could do that. See, see, I, I actually think from the way you've described it, what you do now is probably after you've done it a while, it's probably easier than butler in the buff kind of thing. Because yeah. I did butler in the buff in the UK to save yeah. as an extra job mm. to save up to come out here. Mm. Right. And, that was that was like like you say standing there two hours having it's small hard, having hard a small while, talk. Yeah. You always get a cheeky reach round from a non desirable. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like that's what happens though, isn't it? Yeah, like, you yeah, got yeah. you got to be honest. That's what happens. And that's you do get over the like the if that if we did if, if we did that to a woman. Oh man! If we got, put it this way, girls. If we treated you the same way that you treat us when we're butlers in the buff. If we did that. We'd get arrested. We'd be up on the charges. We'd yeah, be up on sure. up on charges because, it, 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 mate, honestly, I've had, I've had, I've been savagely assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, mate. <laughs> That's oh, what you need. Okay. <laughs> oh, I needed counselling, mate. It's <laughs> the yeah. real reason you got me. Yeah, on I didn't it, need counselling for what actually happened. Is when I turned around, I thought, "Wow, I need counselling now." Mate, like, I need counselling yeah, after yeah, this job. Yeah, I need counselling. Yeah, mate. But no, it's, it is like savages. that. Though. I, we always say that. Where it was like, you get. a room full of these girls together and you only put seven topless blokes in there it's like they feeding the yeah it's like feeding the the sheep to the wolves have you ever literally. seen that it's, it's equivalent to you know that t-rex in in jurassic park yeah yeah it's like it's like it's like you oh no what's them what's them little ones the, the little t-rexes the, 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 the velociraptor about, yeah, yeah <laughs> the velociraptors or whatever you know where they all run at you and they start yeah. ripping your shreds that's how that's literally how it is yeah it's like that it's like that yeah especially crazy. especially because you do the outback towns yeah they're the craziest they're the craziest we did one just recently but 
the one that I did recently, actually, we stayed in because obviously the, you're not going to get the Ritz out there. You're not going to get like such nice hotels when you're staying out there. And we actually stayed in a place that might as well have been a hostel. Like it was as close to a hostel as you could get. And I was like, stuff like that makes you like think back. And I was like, this is actually crazy. I used to stay in places like this and I was like just living normally. And now I look at it and I'm like, I don't want to stay here. Like, cause you get, yeah. you get accustomed to living like the good life. But that stuff makes you reflect back on like the journey. And I'm like, that actually literally only happened two weeks ago. We was in Rockhampton. And I was like, hey, I don't want to stay here. And I was like, I used to stay in like a hostel like this. I stayed in there I know, for months. I know. And, and, and like even, even some of them days you'd be, you, you'd be thinking, you know, am I going to get a bed tonight? Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. But like we were saying earlier, it's like that, that reflection on that journey and, and the power in that. Yeah. I, I think the, I think the most beautiful thing about traveling, the beautiful thing about going to another country and why everyone that listens to this podcast should, should, and you should go and work in another country at some point in time. Hundred percent. And I think the most beautiful thing about that is it's going to give you lots of experiences of, of life that's a little bit tougher than probably what you live in now. But that, that stretch and that, ch- that challenge is going to stretch your, your elasticity yeah. of, of your mind and allow you to see something more for yourself than what you probably do now. And it makes you realise how much of a, how small you are in the world when you actually come outside the bubble that you're living in. That's what I found was the craziest thing. I was like, like you could actually go somewhere, be anyone, do anything, but you don't realise that when you're just living in the bubble that you're in. Well, you have to, you have to get, you have to get out of, uh, you have to get out of the location where you grew up. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. 100%. You, because if you've grown up all your life for 20 years in a location, I know, it would, I know if you'd grown up all your life in the Gold Coast, it'd be hard to live that life. Yeah. But leave that life. But, but it yeah. might make you as well. Yeah. You might, but, but you but, might but, travel and be grateful for where you're at, which is even better than as well. Cause at least then you've seen There's it. no downside. Yeah. There's no there's downside. No downside yeah. I know we joked earlier about living in London now and that's just, that's just all just a bit of banter. But, yeah. I mean, it's a great place to go and experience and to go, yeah. and, to go and put yourself in. Like put, put yourself, if you want growth, you've got to put yourself in hard environments and nothing, nothing shows up more than you. At the end of the day, like look what you've done. You've come to, you've come with a bag of clothes to Australia. You've been through, you've worked around. You, you, you now go from to, to having to stand talking to women for two hours in the buff to now dancing in front of, you know, 40, 50 women, then dancing for, it takes a lot of balls to dance in front of that many women, man. Yeah. People don't understand that. Like, yeah. especially now. I you, know. Now it's like thousands sometimes of, of yeah. in the crowd. So it's actually crazy. And they're the ones where like, cause people always say, Oh, do you still get nervous? But when I'm just doing the normal shows, like private events, I never get nervous. But when you go there and there's like over a thousand, 1500 in the and crowd. And they've all come to see you yeah. because of the following you have on social media. And that's now. the hard thing about mine as well is it's like, they, I don't know, the channing things, it's a blessing and a curse because it's good for my social media and it's got me a big following and it's obviously like blown me up to where it is now. But on the other side, then when you go to walk on stage, you're like, freaking, they're waiting for Channing Tatum to walk out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got and to put on the performance of your life, basically. Yeah. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, 100%, mate. And and, and had, it, had Channing Tatum done the, done the movie at the time when you were referenced to him? They'd, the f- the first one had been had just come out and then that's when Magic Men came about just after the first one. So there's, there's a lot of serendipity, like a lot, a lot of lot of events that just worked out. Yeah. See, th- 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 this is this is why you got to have you got to have an asp- aspiration for life, but not try and put too much focus on how you want life to be because you don't know exactly what life's going to be for you. Mate, I've always been like that. I've always been like. You have a goal, but you also don't want to. You don't want to stick to it too precisely. You also want to have a bit of flexibility because you you can predict five years, or you want to at least have your goals for five years. But you also want to be, you want to like go with the flow as well because you never know exactly which direction you're going to be pulled in. So, did you did, have you ever like like done anything like? Like, but do you believe in like manifestation, like yeah, meditation? Strong, strong on the manifestation. So, so, yeah. so, so how? But my manifestation is more like, um, is like I believe in manifestation, hundred percent. But like, it's like keeping a positive, 
keep him it like keeps me positive is my manifestation of like we said before about you believe that things happen for a reason but that's my way of like keeping me positive even if something does go wrong um, I always believe that happens for a reason, so it'll but, keep me on a good path. But do you remember there being a time when you set yourself goals and then you and then you kind of and then you kind of brought them into your life, but you forgot about them, and then you realised, wow, I achieved that and I set that as a goal. Is there? Yeah, any- it was actually when I got that when I first got when I got one of my apartments, the one before the one I was in now. Um, I, when I was sitting in my car in England with my best mate, we said I was like. Because he was obviously devastated about it, and I was like trying to give him a pep talk. You try and like boost him up, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, we we will live in Australia, and we will have residency there, and we'll be surrounded by beautiful women, and all, there will be palm trees around us, there will be blue skies around us, and like I manifested it, and I th- that was in my head, and I always thought of that. And it's like it wasn't till I remember when I got that apartment, I picked up the keys, and I went there to like you know, and you go there, and you've just moved in before you move all your stuff, and I just got in there and I walked out on the balcony and I was like mate this is that moment yeah, that I was man. talking about but I had I had that moment that you're talking about mm. about three years ago I um I walked into this apartment and I and I thought wow I, it just felt like the place mm. so I I rent the place and obviously get the keys and I walked in here the first day I owned it mm. and I stood on that fucking balcony bro mm. And I fucking had tears running down my cheek, man, because I th- I felt, oh my god, this is ever this view mm. is everything I have I have dreamt of for yeah. so long, and no one else could understand that. Yeah, uh, you probably can't, but I f- I hope you feel this when I say Mate, 100%. this. I fucking, it makes me um because I remember mm. wh- I remember being at the back of a geography cl- class because I was late and didn't have the homework, mm. and I remember sitting at the back of the class, mate. I sat there, I was 14 years old, year nine, sat there at the back of the class with Kamal Danji and we're looking at people present things in the geography class about different locations. Yeah. And one of the one of the kids in the class presented a whole fucking slideshow on the Gold Coast, mate. <laughs> and I turned around to Kamal, right? And it and it was that view, bro. And I said to him, I'm gonna live there, right? And I'm not I was definite in what I said. Yeah. But I kind of doubted myself at the same time yeah and now i'm living that life yeah. in that low in that, that 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 view that i saw is what i'm living yeah and if if you tell people that you think fuck you're crazy mate yeah but my mate come my mate come out he messaged me the other day and he goes and i'll show you the message after the podcast he, he literally said bro you're you're, 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 you're doing, living the life you're, you said yeah you're doing what you said when we were in that geography class it's crazy yeah it's fucking mad, mad that is actually crazy it's fucking mad man it's such a good feeling gives me gives me goosebumps yeah yeah, yeah 100%, gives me goosebumps yeah because like that 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 is that is the that is the magic of the journey man yeah. you can't fucking take that away yeah and it's those memories that you're going to talk about on podcasts like this and down the track, you're going to always remember those little fucking nuances where you had to go through a bit bit of adversity. Like, let's just be honest, right? If I hadn't have been late to that class, I I maybe wouldn't have sat at the back. I maybe wouldn't have seen that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like like everything for a reason. Yeah, 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 100%. It's it's, it's all subconsciously planted in your mind. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like you don't, I remember there's a story and I want to tell this story and you see if you resonate with this. Yeah. So my, so, a young Cassius Clay, right, at twelve years old, got his got his bike stolen. Mm. Right, he got his bike stolen. He goes to the he goes he goes to the to the to the police station. He says to the policeman, mm. um, "Who? St- I want to find out who stole my bike. I want to whoop him." And the police officer said to him, "You better learn how to box, then, son." All right, and then he went on a whole journey of learning how to box mm. because he got his bike stolen. The meaning is this. <laughs> If Muhammad Ali hadn't had his fucking bike stolen, yeah. we wouldn't have Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Right? Because everything is for a reason. So if you're out there right now and you're going for a little bit of adversity and you're thinking to yourself, fuck, where's this coming from? Where's the where what why me? Why have I lost this thing? You've not lost anything. 
the world the world's serving you but you don't yeah. know what the world's serving yeah, you just you yet you don't know yet yeah yeah man it's a powerful story yeah that's actually cool yeah and it's just it just amazed me how 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 sometimes we get disconnected from that you know? yeah it's so disconnected it's so true when you think of like that and you think of the tiniest things that have happened like i bumped into that guy on the night out if I hadn't bumped into him, maybe I'd never have done the topless waiter or not. Do you know what I mean? You, you always look well, back you and you're like done, the would tiniest. You? Yeah, because I, would, I wouldn't have gone looking for that. Like people are like, oh, did you want to get in that industry? Would you? And I was like, no. It was actually just, I was in there already in the mindset of, yeah, oh. I'll say yes to everything right now. And then it was like. Opportunity. Opp- yeah, exactly. Opportunity. You do not know. The funny thing is yeah. though, that guy who I bumped into now, he never lets me live it down to this day, that club promoter. He's like, I made you what you are today because <laughs> he was the guy who like introduced me to Magic Men and all that. But, but it's actually like... But you, th- you, th- you think about that thing, that, 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 that chance meeting mm. has allowed you to start dancing, then to, then to, to making you know, good money to allow you to stay in Australia to then be and allow you to buy a, buy a position in the company. So you have ownership of the company because of how big you got, you've grown your social media followings. You can fly around anywhere. You've got online e-commerce business. Now you've got this, you've got this, you've got this, you've yeah, got, it's, crazy, it's, yeah. it's crazy how it's, how it's exploded. Yeah. So what was the first point in time when you realized you'd built such a following that you could now leverage that and buy a piece of the show. So you could actually own the intellectual property of Magic Men and own a piece of that. It was um, actually lockdown, which made it go to the next level, surprisingly. Like everyone, like a lot of people hated lockdown or it was obviously a tough time for so many people, but it was actually it's actually so good for me on the side of social media and growing that and just taking it to the next level um because i jumped on tiktok which again i wasn't going to get on tiktok because i was like what is this it's just a kid's app and then um my business partner now was actually the one who said to me he was like you need to get on this trust me it's all the up and coming 18 year olds they're all going to be talking about this you should just do some videos chuck some of your old videos on there see how they go did a couple of posts they didn't go too well and then i was like nah this is not for me left it then i was like how can i make it so that i can post but i had to like because obviously with this industry, obviously, you're posting, taking your clothes off and all that, but TikTok's way more PG than that. You have to keep it almost like as if kids are going to watch it. So then I was like, what can I do? And then I was like, I do a transition into the cop outfit. So I'm not taking any clothes off. I'll just yeah. stand there, do a transition into a cop outfit. Did that. It just blew up. Everyone was commenting, Channing Tatum, Channing Tatum. And I was like, what? This is crazy. And it like my followers started to go up like that. And then I was like, all right. I'm in lockdown anyway, so I'll roll with this, see how it goes. And then, mate, it blew up. Blew so up how many views did you get on that first video? That first one got like 50, 100,000 views. And I was like, this is actually crazy. Like, I wouldn't get that on Instagram at the minute. I was like, that's actually going off. And then I did another one and it got like over a million or something, I think it was, for the another, another cop one. Or I did a 50 Shades of Grey, something like that. And then I was like... Yeah, just kept rolling with it. And then, man, I hit a million followers pretty quick from, like, where I started to to hitting a million followers. And I was like, almost didn't, especially because we was in lockdown as well, it felt like just numbers on the screen. And I was like, it was like I was just playing the game. I was like, all right, I'll just keep going, keep going. It was growing my Instagram as well at the same time because then they brought out Instagram Reels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could just literally put the same and content And I just put them. the same content across because I was like, they're going to push the reach on Instagram Reels. So I was like, I just start pushing the same stuff across. And then that blew up again on Instagram. But I was, I, again, I, like you see, it's just numbers on the screen, the following, and obviously it's just a social media thing. But then it wasn't until we did our first show when lockdown ended. We did our, we had like a massive show in Perth. And we, we were like, we, that was our one that we were still just keeping there because it was at the end of the year. And we were like, I think lockdown, like it came to an end, like, October, November for us or something like that in Melbourne. So we just kept the Perth one there because we were like, hopefully we can still do one big show before the end of the year, like get out of lockdown. And then that was huge. Like we sold out, it was like over a thousand girls there, which we'd never done before at Magic Men, like that size of a crowd. And that was when I was like, 
this shit's got real now. Like, everyone was taking photos with me and stuff at this show. And I was like, it was no longer just on a screen on TikTok. I was like, this is actually mad now. It's so crazy. Now, it's like now you can see how you, how you qualified the social media following into, into real life yeah. people that came to your shows now. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean, yeah. So it was like, that was... And it's still weird for me even now, like when people come and ask for a photo. Like, people say to me, oh, like, I'm humble because of that. But it's just because it's still weird to me. Because it's like, it's just social media. I haven't been on like a TV show or anything like that. But sometimes it does feel like I've been on Love Island or something like that because people in the airport will be like, are you a Will of TikTok? And I'm like, that's actually crazy. Like, it's crazy how social media is now. People like put you up on that pedestal as if you've almost been on TV show when you've got like a big following. And um, it's, it's just it's just another another example of a serendipitous event where you you get onto the right platform at the right time. Yeah, 100%. Because uh, I heard that about people who got on Instagram back in the day. And that's yeah. how they got a big platform back then because Instagram was like popping with the reach was good. And obviously I got on Instagram late and all that. But so yeah, TikTok, I just got on at the right time as well. And obviously... I was speaking to Tammy Hembrow, um mm. ages ago and a couple of years back. And she just hit... She was just... She didn't... She didn't realise at the time, she thought she was post, she didn't realise that Instagram was, was like, she thought it was like a private um, photo app. Yeah. She didn't realise in the early days you got, you, you got loads of followers off it. She yeah. thought she was just posting on there and, and, and it was like a storage type thing. Mm. And she, through a pregnancy and that, she, she and, and getting her body back, she was just recording her progress and she just blew up. Man. Yeah. And it's just like, then she started to see that this was real and yeah. started to see, because she, again, she had that same, same thing where she didn't, she just numbers just, on yeah, the screen. Like, yeah. She had no idea at the time yeah. like, what it meant at the time. Mm. She, she blew up early days of Instagram. Yeah. Hun- she was like hun- one of hundreds. Ones, yeah. Uh, this, this was, this was a funny thing about that. I, I'm, I'm meeting her and I'm talking to her and like, I remember the lads in the boxing gym, like saying, have you seen this chick on Instagram? Yeah, like, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like back in the day, like yeah. before it even come to Australia and, and, and like, you know, three or four years into my thing, I'm talking to her about it. And like, yeah. it's crazy now the world works that you, yeah. and how, and how you can grow. If you're in the right place at the right time, you can grow all kinds of different pieces of real estate, but it's just about catching the right trends, isn't it? Yeah, exactly right. What do you, do you see any other social media apps at the moment other than TikTok that, that are kind of like got good grounds for growth? <sighs> Mate, it's hard. It's hard to predict, isn't it? Like no one would have predicted TikTok to go how it is now. But like, there's another one, Triller, that people have spoke about. But like, I'm not sure at the minute. At the minute, I just see like TikTok and Instagram, obviously, still the big dogs. But you never know. You never know when something's going to come along. Like even Snapchat had its time, didn't it? But now it's sort of died off again. So you never know which ones are going to. Because people thought TikTok was just like a fad where it might just die off. Whereas at the minute, it just seems to be getting better and bigger. So, mate, do you know what I'd know. love to see you do? I'd love to see you just start posting your your, your content on LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn. I'm not oh, yeah. posting be, on be, that. Be, 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 because because how do, how do you know you wouldn't pop off on LinkedIn on all you know when they're bored in the office in the afternoon? All these women are bored in the office. Mate, it, it might it might pop off on LinkedIn. Next well, minute you see me posting on there now. Yeah, times well, a day. well, I've heard of Stranger Things working. You don't yeah. know, do you? You don't know. You might get like even out Twitter goes alright though. I I started using that. But I never used to use that before, but um, like well, that Zo- goes Zo- Zuby had a big go at me the other day because Zuby. Zuby's massive on Twitter, mm. massive, right? He goes, watch this photo. I'll, I'll post a photo of us in, in, we was in Grilled in Melbourne. He goes, oh, I'll just post this photo of us doing the podcast. And this went, just took off. And I'm like, Zuby, man, that's Twitter. He's like, yeah, bro. Like, it goes off. You just got to put, put your thoughts out. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Like, It's weird how some people are bigger on some apps. Some platforms. Some are, yeah, some platforms and some are bigger on others. But but here's the key to most of you listening into this. It's just about taking action on some platform. Yeah, you should, and it's consistency you, on anything you do, really. I mean, if you want to, if any of you listening to this want to, want to build something of meaning that's meaningful to you in any niche or anything, just pick one platform and start creating content for that platform. So, yeah. you, so if you consume content on other platforms, that's all good, but just have one platform where you actually create rather than consume and i'd still say tiktok at the minute is the one to jump on because if you can do if you can do video and you can yeah. make something in, in regards to video i think i and mean tic- yeah videos for sure because tiktok's 
good and then you can repost them on your Instagram reels so I've been sleeping on TikTok a long time right mm. and and in the last two weeks, I've done one video that's done 2.4. I've done one video that's done 1.2 million. And I just said to, to my video guy that about a couple of weeks ago, I said, look, let's go hard on TikTok. We'll go 5, 10 a day. And we just mm-hmm. went 5 to 10 a day. And we're throwing everything out there. Because on TikTok, you can. You can just yeah, throw you anything. Can just you chuck just, it out there. You yeah. just chuck anything at it. Chuck anything out. Chuck anything out. And the algorithm picks one up and throws it out there to... 300,000 people and then one gets 3,000 views or 500 views and yours is harder as well because it's a podcast so you're talking but you can't put music well you can put music silently I guess but it's not the same as it's, a, it's, it, a, a it, dancing thing I suppose if like it's that. a really emotional story you can put like a Tom emotional music a, 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 over it yeah. a Tom emotional music in that Tom Bailey track but yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a different kettle of fish but it's just about it's just about sending it as hard as you can isn't it like, 100% just, just it consistency out there. yeah 100%. but so you then, you then bought after that show. You bought a piece in that. Bought, bought yeah, because of the tours, I wanted to be a more of a part of the tours rather than because I was still doing a lot of private functions um, at well, that point as well. But was um, there was there a part in that where you thought to yourself, "I don't want to earn a wage anymore. I need to own a piece of the intellectual property." Yeah, hundred percent. Because it was like, and Magic Men's been around for around the same time that I started there when it was like pretty new as well, as well. So I felt like. It was my baby as well because I was like, I've seen this grow from the club that we were at doing 50, 60 girls to now doing 500, 600, 1,000 women. So I just wanted to obviously be a part of it then. How, how did you break and negotiate the deal? I had a lot of pull because of the social media thing, 100%. And it's like, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to see that as my social media has grown. You're driving the, the traffic to the The traffic's events. come in a lot stronger, yeah. But the good thing about Magic Men is like all the boys get around the social media as well. And that's what people love about Magic Men is like the crew that we've got. Because there's a lot of other companies out there, obviously, that do male entertainment and all that. But they, they're they just like the company. They don't have individual like characters of the company that all yeah. like push together. So it's yeah. like we all branch off as our individual characters and the girls follow us individually. Like some of them like Caesar, Sean or some of the other boys, they've all got their like characters that they like. And then we all grow the company together. So, what amazed me crew. about that show is like how I was I was reading your reviews on um, Trip. Was it not Trip Advisor? Um, the other one. I was reading your reviews yeah. on there anyway. Yeah. Um, and there's women. Yeah, Trip Advisor. Trip, yeah. It was. Trip well, Advisor. no, the yeah. What well, it's, this, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the same it's, kind of it's thing. The same it? kind of yeah, thing, yeah. right? So I was reading your reviews, and there's women on there that go. They post pictures of the event with you guys. And they put, oh, I can't wait to go again in three months' time. And I can't wait to, I'm, I'm booked in this one, this one. This one. I, thought, I thought, I'm reading through these reviews and I'm thinking to myself, fuck, this is a repeat business. It's return man. customers, this, this yeah. Is, this is return, return customers. And that's again what, like loads of guys that have come to Magic Win who have worked for other companies, that's what they always say. And that's what we've tried to do different is, like we still have so much crowd interaction um, compared to like, because we could easily just go do the show come on stage for our set and then just go back out the back yeah. maybe come out for a few photos but that's it we could if we didn't even have to do photos really because they're only coming there for the show but what we do is we do a meet and greet before the show so they get to actually meet us then we do the, the, the show they see us on the stage then at the end we come out and get photos and I'll go around individually because I know a lot of the girls have come to see me I'll go around individually like during the breaks everything's try get as many photos and obviously it does my head in as well at the same time like you get overtaken photos but at the same time I'm so grateful for everyone who's coming to the show I'm like two seconds That's for a all photo shares it's going to make social. their night yeah all, so, all shares on social media because they're all putting them on Instagram yeah, story yeah. That's the thing. Social media just takes it even further because everyone tags Magic Men. That's the good thing about, like, male entertainment back in the day might have been a bit, like, underground. So if they even if they did have social media back then, they wouldn't have been posting about it because they probably wouldn't tell people they're going. Whereas now it's seen as, like, almost a cool thing for a girl's night. It's, it's like t- a normal, regular thing. And that's what... Turning over millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. Now. And people will just keep coming back. It's because of that. It's because they are literally treated like queens while they're there. Um, They'll come back again and they're like, they want to see you. It's like they've made a friendship with you almost. And what's the back-end sales funnel to a, to an adult entertainment show? 
shows like are you selling them like cowboy hats like like some like raw muscle shows do and all of that because I know are you we sell, are you do selling? merchandise at yeah. the show which the merchandise started during lockdown as well that sort of got us through lockdown because obviously the whole industry went dead and that was when we first opened up our store because I got the followers there and then I was like um, so all your store revenue is all all off organic yeah, no, it's all no organic. Pay, no There's paid no ads. paid ads. Yeah, so every, it's no just pay. literally like other than the product and and obviously wherever you get the product from that cost, it's all pure profit. It's all profit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, That's the crazy beautiful. thing. It's all free advertising. I was talking to Troy Candy about this, and he told me that he'd done two and a half million in in sales of his snorkel. You know, yeah, Troy, the snorkel. The, the yeah, snorkel, yeah. Right, two and a half million, zero paid ads. Yeah. Because the, because, the because they promo it for him as well. It's the same as Magic huge, Men. Huge, yeah, they pro like generated. same as my when I sent the calendars. I to start with I promoted it, but then once the girls started tagging me, once like I sent a few out, it just sells itself then because it's like they see other girls with it and so, they post it and then they're doing the free promo for you so you don't need to pay for ads. So what would your advice be then to these guys who listen to this podcast in how they can create some kind of virality product that they can sell organically? thing is, what I think what like loads of people struggle with is is like they'll bring the product, they'll have a, they'll, they'll, have, they'll come up with a sick idea of the product but then they will, they, they won't have the followers first, they'll come up with the product first then they'll try to sell it then it's hard because then you're just trying to grow just on the product. Whereas mine, how I did it was I got the followers there first. Yeah. So they're already interested in you. Then it's a lot easier to sell it to people who have already sold on you kind of thing. They like you. Yeah, people buy so then, you. Yeah, anything that you bring out, they sort of want to, they'll want to help you or get around you. And if you if you put out enough value into the world, you you will get you will be able to get one or two three percent back, and that three percent could be a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. Like you've right. experienced. Yeah. I mean, my mate, my mate, uh, my, my mate Paul is 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 um. His 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 alter ego is called Sven Goodvunson on Instagram, right? He's he pretends he's a Swedish house trans DJ. He's actually an IB for tour man, right? <laughs> he's a he's a wicked guy, funny guy. Go follow him on Instagram. He's yeah. fucking hilarious, right? Anyway, he fucking built this whole alter ego of being a Swedish house trans DJ, put on the accent, everything. Yeah, built like thirty forty thousand. It's the character they buy into because yeah. because they've bought into this character because he's a funny guy, and he'll sell like four hundred to a thousand calendars yeah. a year at like whatever price yeah. with the margin, 100%. just just for a little cheap Shopify store, and he'll yeah. and he'll and he'll and he'll bank some cash. Yeah, hundred percent. That's like, what's good about Magic Men as well is the. Um, the uh, we can actually sell our merch at the shows as well, which a lot of people they might just do it online, whereas we actually get like to see them in person as well. So that's where a lot of our it's like fifty fifty, a lot online, and then like the rest is we're actually seeing them in person, which they want to buy even more when they see you in person, kind of thing. And 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 I just I didn't realize how much they become raving fans. Yeah, I know of of you because you are. You are like their perfect dreamboat man to them. They've seen you on TikTok. They've seen you on Instagram. Maybe it's true, bro. Yeah. It's like they, they, they've, they've built this. They've built that. It's like they know you. They like you. They trust you. They, they're, they're in your world. And when they're in your world, they just, they just, obviously you're serving them with, with, with the, with the, the, the performance and the stage and the, but it's just a brilliant business model. Yeah. That, that touring business model is a phenomenal, yes. phenomenal, great Towards cash flow business. Yeah, hundred percent. Great cash flow business. So, th- so what do you hope to take it to? Because obviously, like you, you, when you see the bigger, the ones that are bigger than you in the world at the moment, obviously you're the biggest in Australia. Yeah, and you guys are smashing in Australia. Yeah. But I presume, if I if I'm right in thinking this, you'd probably be looking to take this to kind of like Las Vegas and yeah, hundred percent, and London and trying to make it more of a. Try hey, I'd love to bring it home to London. That's definitely that's on the cards for sure. But our first. That was obviously always our goal. We want to go international, especially once we did like, because Australia, and we'll still keep doing Australia, like if not twice the amount of tours that we're doing, which is hard to even think of, but we'll keep doing Australia as we're doing, but we want to go international because we've got a big enough and a strong enough crew now to do that, which is going to be our first test of our first international well we're going to New Zealand, but our first proper international where we're going to be away for a month. So we'll be running 
the Australian tour still and we'll be doing Canada at the same time. So Canada is our first big test of being away for a month and still having a crew running the Melbourne show at the same time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's going to be a test, but it's like I reckon we're going to be we're going to be ready for it. It's not till May next year, um, but it's going to be crazy and we're, it's going to be hard for us as well because we've never done that many shows in one month because normally we. It's still predominantly just the weekends, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But Canada's going to be Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, Thursdays. Like it's going to be like twenty something shows in thirty days. So, and what pe- what a lot of people won't know about you is the fact of like, yeah, the people think, ah, oh, Frankie, you've bought a stripper on here. What? Why you bought a stripper on on here? I tell you why I bought a stripper on here. Because like, you want to join Magic Man. Nah, I, 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 mate, I am fully, I am fully ready to do that. You know what I'm saying? I, I reckon I'd send it, bro. Have you seen me? Mate, I could send it. You, you don't, mate, mate, I've got faith in you, bro. bro. I got some fucking moves in my locker. Don't you worry. <laughs> but nah, I, the reason why is one because I've seen how your life, your life is similar to mine in the way that it's changed dramatically. Mm. Two. What have you done? You've gone from working a job to buying into intellectual property of a show. Three, you've smashed e-commerce out the ballpark, mm. fully driven off social media. You've built a great social media following. And not not only that, you're, you're, now, you're using the cash flow to invest in real estate. Yeah. So uh, we were talking before the podcast. Yeah. Like you've got massive plans for like... Yeah, yeah but buying more apartments and renting them out. Like, give me a bit of an insight into your thoughts on all that. Mate, it's like my next, because obviously you can't do, especially you can't do male entertainment forever. So um, real estate's just been my little project that I've just been trying to learn. Obviously, it's a long it's a long game to learn about, but it's my new project I want to learn about. And it's, it's actually, it's like gives me a fire in the belly to do that as well. It's like, it, it interests me to invest into that so yeah I've got my first property my second one's on the way and um, yeah I'm just keen to get into the real estate game and invest in that so then it gives me a goal for the future as well obviously I want to still do Magic Men for as long as I can but once my body finally gives up then I've got something you know, you know I've got something there you were my first and only friend so far to ever bring out their own vibrator <laughs> I just want to tell you that. I just want to tell you that. Like, cause hey, the vibrator was a game changer. That was like the first product that I brought out. And I was, we were scared because it was like we invested a lot into it at the time when lockdown came in and we didn't have a lot of shows. Well, we had no shows on. Was, was that a vibrator that you created from scratch and designed? Or, it's, or, was, it, or was it originally white labeled? It like started as a joke because I put it on my story during lockdown. I was like, what am I going to do now? The shows are over. I was like, shall I bring out a sex toy or something? Shall I bring out a vibrator? You know, just a little poll on Instagram. Got like 99% yes. And then I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> I was like, maybe we could do this. And then got some ideas going. And then we was like. Yeah, I suppose you asked the girls what they wanted. Yeah. And then we started turning it into that. We were like, give it names. And, you know, especially with a name like Will, they were coming up with all sorts of names for this. <laughs> For this thing, like it was the what were they calling it? Because the sex, the, it was the sex toy that that really took off as your first econ product, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the first thing that we. That was the only thing. That was the first product, yeah, that we put on the store, and we brought out this like big because we like invested some money into it. But yeah, there was no shows on. We were like, this has to work because we're like, it's not the best time to be dishing out money when you're already in like a lockdown with no other shows but then we did a big promo video for it i did like a a video with a girl pretending that i'd brought her the sex toy and then like it like was her imagination of the thing or like she was imagining me but then it was really she was using the toy so i did this promo video and it went off and the video went really well and yeah, just it went crazy. How did you manage to get around the rules of social media in terms yeah, of that's Yeah, that, that's what actually, fuck, that's what, because um, I lost my account because of the sex toy. So it was like a double-edged right, sword. Yeah. It was like, especially that, that promo video we did, we had to cut out so much because they wouldn't even let us post it at first. Because I posted it, it went up for five or six hours. Sales were going crazy and I was like, this is sick. Boom, Instagram's taking it down. And I was like, no, no way. Then we had to chop and edit it a bit and change it, obviously to take out loads of scenes. And then um, we got it back up again. And then, again, though, even though we had the massive promo video, which helped, it was just consistency. Because then I was talking about it. I was, like, like, having banter with the girls about, like, 
the toy and all that and then it was like they kept the sales coming in and coming in and that was like then my I was just like my project in lockdown was just to see how many of them like we could sell. And we actually sold out the first batch that we invested in. So, 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 so have you now done like seven figures in sex toy sales? I reckon it'd be up there, yeah, hundred percent. Especially with like now we've taken it. With, this is our fifth or sixth order of like batch, like a big batch that we've ordered in. And now what? How many units ordered. are you up to ordering now? At a time, we're doing two thousand at a time. But we're still because we 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 did two products, which one was my mold and the other one was just a normal vibrator. So so, so you actually got you <laughs> actually got your, your the dick. mold sold out though, and then we didn't do it anymore. It was weirding me out a little bit. But <laughs> so you, so you, you went you went so hold on a minute. I didn't know this. You went you went and got your dick molded, and then and then you sold that to the girls as well as a, as a as a dildo. We did the mold and the and we had two. Yeah, one was. Seduction and temptation, they were called. Good names, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there was one that was like a vibrator dildo, and the other one was a mold of me. And then the mold sold out, but then the vibrator was going really well as well. So now we just kept with the the vibrator one. The mold weirded me out a little bit, but <laughs> hey, if it's a, <laughs> but it was going off. What, yeah, it was what, good. What, what, well, you know, if it's good margins on the mould, get the mould back out on the road. You reckon? Yeah, 100%. bring it back. Bring it back, mate. All right, we'll bring it back. Fine. Well, mate, mate why, why not, mate? If it, if it cash, we were going to bring out a new one. Apparently, there's a new one. This is why women hate men as well. Um, there's a new one which is like a clit sucker, which is meant to be like I've the seen bees them. knees. Have I've you seen, seen that? Them. Yeah, the I've girls seen them. talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apparently, we they don't need us anymore. So. Mate, I'm gonna uh, bring <laughs> they they do they do because it, because if they it, need someone to nag at, don't they? Uh, well, <laughs> look, nah, nah, they um, but yeah. So I'm thinking about bringing out that, but yeah, like how because of how busy the tour's been, the the shop has taken like a back back foot now, and we've still got products, and we take them like the calendars and take that stuff on tour. But as for coming up with new ideas, we haven't really done anything yet we've just been reordering the stuff that we are selling out of so this is this is this is why i love this podcast because it's 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 such versatile you never know what business you're going to discover and how yeah there's so many different ways are sex sells though that's what i can tell you that is like that we was not expecting we just we thought maybe we'd make money obviously we wouldn't have done it if we didn't think we weren't going to but we didn't expect the amount or the, the amount of people that bought it f- from, like, we just wasn't expecting it. Is there a mental, um, is there some mental health issues in this, though, for, for you? Do you ever feel like it's hard for you to have a, a, a girl that you love because of all the stuff that you're doing? Hey, we've gone three, six, that was like a full 180, yeah, yeah, but you got yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> from dildos to now we're getting deep. Nah, that is, yeah, is the hard, that is the hardest thing because, about nah, the because, No, because the reason I asked you, because I see the other side to you, I want, I want to show them every side of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we can have a laugh but and It's just joke. how quick we went from Yeah, but bro, you got to see, <laughs> you threw me off Mate, I, mate I, got, <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know when to turn it around. Like, yeah, you know what I'm nah, saying? Nah, like, nah, it's, nah. It's, it's the truth though, isn't it? Like, let's, 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 be, let's be honest, right? Because when I... When I but even social media is, I feel like social media even can do that to people with like, obviously with male entertainment as well that doesn't give you trust issues and stuff like that which we can talk on. But even social media, having a big social media, how I see it is it's like having a lot of money. Like people, a lot of girls will be they'll they'll be with guys or they'll with a lot of money same as there'll be of a guy who's got a big following or he's verified or yeah he's mm. got like millions of followers they want to be with you or they want to tag you or be seen with you but how how deep can you trust them how deep does the connection really go see th- this is what i mean because i because i i've, I've always felt like you'd you'd like to meet someone like mm. do you know what i'm saying but maybe you maybe that's not you feel like that you have to be a bit guarded now because yeah. of, because of all this stuff does that not Loads of people, I do get that as well. Loads of comments. People do comment on my things saying, Are you not lonely? Like, especially when I post on tours and that, and it's normally just me or like like this trip I've come by myself and stuff where you're always just in and out of hotels. A lot of people do comment that they're like, Are you not lonely? And I can see why people like think like that because, well, it can be a lonely game sometimes because you're getting your hustle on. So it is like that sometimes, but um, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those. One of those things. I I like 
obviously everyone wants companionship or to be with someone. I'd love to be with someone, but at the minute, how I am, I'm hustling. I'm happy being single as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's I am of, actually lot, genuinely there's happy. Power, yeah. There's a lot of power in, in following your purpose, whatever that purpose is at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I, I don't worry about. It's different for guys and girls. Like we haven't really got a, like a clock or anything too much on us, so I'm not worried about settling down. I know I've got I've got some time for that when it comes to it, but. It, yeah, I just, it just, I can, I can see like there's, there, there might be a little bit of you that's, that's on the shelf about it. Yeah, hundred percent, like, and that's what the hardest thing as well with like when you meet girls, is you like you said you are a bit guarded, but not only that, but you sometimes I'll meet the best girl and you get on so good, and you're like I could wife this girl up, like we've got on so good, the connections there, the sparks there, but then I'll pull myself back because I'm like, nah, this is gonna distract me from. My, from my path and it's like even if you don't want it to having a relationship in in the work that I'm doing and the way I, I, I am on social media and and even it's just unfair for me to almost be in a relationship with someone because of my tour life like imagine because I, I was I'm always like the, if the role was on the other foot and it was your missus and she's only there three days and the other three days she's posting with all a load of blokes or she's on tour and she's like do you know what I mean? It's a yeah, hard, it's a it's hard, hard thing game, to do. Yeah. It's hard, and it. I'd rather be in a relationship once I'm, say I'm settled in Melbourne. I'm still, I can still be around the shows, but I'm just not, not the tour life how it is now. Do you? How long do you reckon you got left of tour life for you being head of the show? That's another thing as well. That's always in the back of your mind. You never actually know. There's only, you never know when the next young gun's going to come in or. Like there's gonna be there's there's gonna be another headliner at some point, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? It has to be, go, there it? has to be, yeah. And yeah, you got I don't know, you just gotta try to keep yourself fresh and keep keep on your game as much as possible. But yeah, that's another thing that's always in your mind. That's why that's why I'm loving the real estate thing as well, because the more I'm getting into that and the more I'm focused on that, oh, that's becoming actually like into reality now, because I always spoke about it. Now that's coming more into reality, I'm more like you've got like a safety net as well because the stripping and the that game is like a, you you've, you know you've got a time limit you've got a time limit but I th- but you've done the smart thing you've you've always known the time limit was there yeah. and you've and you've um allocated accordingly yeah like your watch is a good investment i've seen that watch earlier <laughs> i see it at the airport it's a beautiful it's watch decent, yeah. Do you know what i mean like you never thought you'd be out you never thought back in the day that you'd be out in australia stripping and be able to buy a watch like oh, that oh mate no way Do you know what i mean yeah. that, that that would have been a watch you know that was that's cost you that would cost you about 3 years salary and yeah you mate, know, 100% and, and, that, and that just that to me is 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 like so empowering to see how much abundance you've created in your life yeah. from from that chance meeting when you were just out walking around surfers drunk yeah. or wherever you were drunk. Yeah, it's just mental, isn't it? Like, yeah, hundred percent. Just mental how how the world works and how it, how it provides you with an opportunity. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? If you could like summarize some key points in terms of like if you would, if you if I was to ask you how you would empower people out there listening to this to go and you know take what's take what's right for them in the world in terms of like you know get, what what kind of key points would you say really helped you throughout this journey to kind of you know distill that yeah well like we said i'm like strong on manifestation and seeing it and believing it and if you do honestly feel like this there's, there's better for you out there because i always had that feeling when i was in england there's always i always believed there was a life that I need to be living out there. And um, mate, always keep a positive mindset. And consistency is always my number one thing. I always come back to whatever it is, st- stick to it and just keep plugging away at it, whatever you think it is, and keep that positive mindset. It is going to work out. It is going to work out. It is going to work out. Because that's what I've always done. And if it's like, like a lot of people will take one no or two no's and life's always going to try to beat you down always no matter what it is and and especially even some of the cl- closest people to you are going to tell you that that's not going to happen but you yeah. just got if you honestly believe you just got to keep fire like tunnel vision head down you got go f- for it you got to fire it and wire it in your brain that you that you are going to do what you say you're going to do right, 100% and trusting in yourself is is something i've learned is i never take anyone else's opinion of what I'm doing too seriously. Yeah, because that's what I love about Magic Man as well. Like I've got such a thick skin now with 
with and social media they like because you you see all the comments and all that stuff you got to have such a thick skin in that game and it's actually helped me so much just in everything in in everything in life having a thick skin well, what is the biggest place you you struggle at the moment where i struggle yeah um Mate, I don't, I don't really, I've, mate, I've got a good life. I don't really struggle too much. Even with, like, the mental health thing, I don't, I can't, I've never really had no problems with anything like that, to be honest. I always, like, I'm really good at pulling myself into a good, or always just keep myself into a good, strong headspace. Do you think that's just down to the, the routine you take with all, obviously you're big on your fitness and everything, keeping yeah. in shape? And yeah, 100%. Uh, it think, plays a big part in it. Like, even with the gym, some, especially recently with, like, tours and everything we've been doing, my gym motivation has been zero. But because of, like, the, I've ingrained it into a habit, now I'll go to the gym. It's just in my routine. I'll just go there. Even though I've got no motivation at all to go there some days, I'll you, still go there because I've, I've turned it. it that long of going there into a habit. Like it's it's ingrained in me as a as it goes past that point. You know where they say like, oh, you 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 create it into a habit. It does actually happen if you if you just have to stay consistent long enough. You just have to ingrain into yourself of why you're doing it as well. I think if I think if your why is big enough, like obviously, yeah. obviously your why at the minute is is simply you know you want to go out, you want to buy lots of commercial real estate, you want to grow your shows, you want to expand into America. Yeah. You've got a pretty big you got a pretty big why and a pretty big purpose behind what you're doing. I think if everyone who listens to this looks for whatever their purpose is, mm. I mean I know we've had a bit of banter on here about sex toys and stuff and the other, but at the end of the day, like generate to get to to build a social media following and generate seven figures out of sex toys on the back end of it it's like well yeah how can you that that's business 101 yeah it's like so what what you've essentially said through throughout this podcast is cr- generate attention give value to the marketplace mm. sell a product on the back end yeah and it's like that's a, that's the beautiful thing and sell out live shows as well yeah. but if the, if you had to check out the planet tomorrow mate and you couldn't leave none of this behind, but you could just leave the one golden pearl of wisdom for this audience to help take them to take them to that next level. What would it be? One golden pearl of wisdom. Hmm. <laughs> Keep smiling, stay positive, and um, don't ever give up on your dreams. I love that, mate. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for coming Cheers. here today. Thank mate. you so much for having mate, me. Mate, honestly, I've uh, wanted to do this podcast for a long time, as you know. I've been I've been chasing you down. Yeah, mate. I know. Yeah, and no, I'm glad you did because I am like that. I'm useless. But yeah, I mate. I just wanted to I just wanted to give people a bit of an insight into you and a bit more behind the curtain. I mean, we've had a bit of banter on here. We've had yeah, a, mate. Like we, I said to you, I don't really do many podcasts at all like most of my tiktoks i don't even talk in to be honest like yeah it, i just I leave wanted, that stuff on instagram but i just wanted to give people that that insight into you know how you've how you've generated capital and how you're living your life like like you are now through doing something where where not every podcast would talk about this yeah so it's like it's, it, mostly it's just the stripper questions yeah, but I, I get there's people. There's going to be people saying, "Why didn't you ask him about what's the worst thing a girl did at the yeah, show?" Yeah, because yeah. that that that's not really what I'm trying to get from this. You can do that on another do, day. Do you know, do you know yeah. what I mean? That's not really. I didn't really want it to be that conversation. Yeah. I, wanted, I wanted. I wanted to give a real insight into you, your thought process, and how you've and how you've created attention, and then took that attention and turned it into something meaningful for you that's allowed you to change your life. Yeah, and I think that's a beautiful thing, mate. So credit to you, man. Thanks, man. Thank I you so much it. for coming Thanks on the show. For having me. And guys, do me a solid favor, yeah. Getting Will Parfit on the show was an absolute mission. Probably, a, probably <laughs> another one that's took me about two years <laughs> or, or more since since we since we met, man. And uh, and and credit credit to him for everything he does and and the way he smashed it. Share it on social media, girls. Come on, come on. Share your Keep two share. Share, share your two favorite English magic men. If he gets on, enough shares, this guy will be on stage at Magic yeah, Men getting his shirt off. I, I'll We're be getting back in that apron. I, I got. I, <laughs> <laughs> mate honestly i tell you what right I'd rather go on stage than get in the apron again the apron's where you get shit money in the I'll reach get, round get you a magic I'm, men apron don't I'm, not, I'm not I'm not about the uh, I'm not about that reach round it's uncomfortable as fuck <laughs> but anyway guys <laughs> like share subscribe I hope this has been a little bit different of, a, of content for you and I hope you've loved every single minute of it and as you know we've got banger after banger after banger dropping on this podcast and you know I love it and you know I love you and you know I appreciate you so let's go Much love. Peace out. (laughs) Guys, do me a solid favor. Drop a comment below this video and let us know who you want on the podcast next. Don't forget to subscribe to the Frankie Lee Podcast.